This tutorial is to introduce you to the anatomy of a character, or in other words, what it is that makes up a character, and how those parts relate to one another, and various ways to define those parts. I will cover the different character components, component connections to other components, the sprite elements of each component, and layers. A character is composed of various components, also called sprites. Each of these sprites represent a piece of the character or a part of its body. Here you can see the basic dummy character in an assembled and exploded view. In the exploded view to the right, each of the body parts has been labeled. As you can see, this dummy character only has the basic body parts defined. There are many other body parts that can be added to the character. Here is a more detailed character in an assembled and exploded view. As you can see, this character has additional parts added to it with the facial features. The eyes, nose, ears, mouth, and hair. Looking at an exploded view of the head, you can see the various facial parts that were used here. Note that there are no eyebrows. A character only needs to use those parts that define the character. You do not have to use all the parts. Each body part or sprite is an image. The sprite image can be any importable image type, be it a vector drawing, image file, or even a flash file with animation. Looking at the actor here, the eyes are a flash file with animation, the hand on the left and the forearm on the right are from JPEG files, and the rest of the body parts are vector images imported as SWF files. With all the different formats, you have endless possibilities for creating and or enhancing a character. You are also not limited to only one image per sprite, but can have any number of images available of any type or types. Here you can see the standard vector images, as well as a JPEG image of the screw threads I've imported. The hand has two lists. It has a default mappings list, and it has a custom mapping list. In the custom mapping list is where I put the hammerhead JPEG image. Crazy Talk Animator also provides default lists of predefined sprite elements for some of the body parts. These predefined parts provide the means to generate generic motion clips that can be used for any actor. To use custom images with the motion clips, you must replace the predefined images with your own. Here are the predefined sprite elements for the left eye of the character Eddie. If your character uses a different eye, then you need to replace each one of the eye elements with your custom eye drawings. Then when using the provided motion and facial clips, your character will switch to the various eyes as defined by the clip. Not all body parts have predefined elements. The ones that do are the eyes, nose, eyebrows, hands, and mouth. The mouth also has an additional list for speech, which is used for lip syncing with the voice track. Each sprite that makes up a character is connected to another in a hierarchy that allows one body part to move other body parts. A good example is an arm. The arm is composed of three parts, the hand, the forearm, and the arm. The hand is connected to the forearm, and the forearm is connected to the arm. When the forearm moves, all the parts connected to it, in this case the hand, also moves. And when the arm moves, the connected forearm moves, which in turn moves the hand. As you can see, depending upon which part is connected to another, affects how the parts move. Now when you move the hand, nothing else moves because there is nothing connected to the hand. You might say that the forearm is connected to the hand, so why doesn't that move when the hand moves? Well, that is because the connections are one way. Each connection has a parent object and a child object. That is why moving the hand does not move the forearm, but moving the forearm does move the hand. Because of this parent-child relationship, there is a hierarchy of connections. This hierarchy can be seen while in composer mode in the bottom right corner under the scene manager on the scene tab. At the top of the hierarchy is the lower torso. All parts are connected to this, the most parent of all parts. When the torso is moved, all other parts are moved with it. Looking at the tree list of the hierarchy under the scene tab, 
you can scroll through and see what a part's parent is so that you can see what the part will be moved by. This is sometimes loosely referred to as a bone structure. When looking at this tree list, just remember that for any object moved, all objects connected to it will also move. Those are the ones that are shown underneath and slightly to the right of it. If you scroll down to the right arm, you will see the parent-child relationships with the right forearm and the right hand. For moving the right arm, the right forearm and right hand will move. For the right forearm moving, only the right hand will move. And for the right hand moving, nothing else will move. Since the character is comprised of all these sprite objects and the character is only two-dimensional, these sprites have to be stacked or layered on top of each other. When doing so, this means that each object has a position in the stack, sometimes called the z-order. The position of a sprite in the stack determines which sprite it will cover and also which sprites will cover it. The sprite object at the top of the stack will cover all other sprites below it. The sprite just below the top one will cover all the other objects except the top sprite. If we look again to the lower right corner under the Scene Manager, there is the Layers tab. This is where the order of the sprites in the stack are determined. Here we see that the face is higher in the stack than the left hand, forearm, and arm. So that means that when we move the arm, it will be behind or covered by the face, as you can see here. If you want the arm, forearm, and hand to be in front of the face, then you have to move those sprites higher in the stack than the face. Here I will move them to the top of the stack. We'll select the left arm and hit the move to top. Go back down, find the left forearm, move that to top, and go find the left hand and move that to the top. Now the left hand, left forearm, and arm are all at the very top of the stack, and the face is below it. Now moving them, you see that they are in front of the face. To recap, I have shown that a character is composed of various sprites. That these sprites can be from different types of image files that you can have multiple images for each sprite, that the sprites are all connected to each other in a hierarchy, and that the sprites are layered. I hope this has given you an understanding of the basics of the anatomy of a character. If you have any questions, please contact me at ctastepbystep at gmail.com.